Hi everyone, I hope you're good. Now, you can probably hear the music and see that there's some balloons and banners up. Well, if I stop the music, I can tell you that today is an extra special person's birthday. It is my mummy's 50th birthday. So hashtag we read on Wednesday today is going to be a little bit different because although you guys are going to be involved, it's especially for my mum's birthday. Now, today's story is going to be a little bit longer, so I hope we're all comfy and cosy because I'm going to read my mum's favourite story called The Wizard of Oz. Are we all sat comfy? Now, I can't see my mum, which is why, mummy, this video is dedicated to you. So sit back and enjoy your favourite story. Has everybody else got their listening ears on? Let's go then. Dorothy was worried. She stood at the front door and looked out across the dusty grey Kansas Pare. A great wind howled coming even closer. The shutters rattled and a little wooden house groaned around her. Dorothy lived with Uncle Henry and Aunt Em, who were both out working in the field, nowhere to be seen. Dorothy's little grey dog, Toto, began to whine, so she picked him up and held him in her arms. As the great wind raced towards her, it whipped up a dust storm. The house shook and shuddered. Within seconds, the house had filled with wind and then Dorothy felt it lift off the ground and whirl up into the sky. The little house spun through the air for what seemed like hours until eventually Dorothy felt it falling. It hit the ground with a great thud. Holding Toto in her arms, Dorothy slowly walked outside. She was shocked at what she saw. The house had landed in the middle of a strange and beautiful land, unlike anywhere Dorothy had ever seen. It was so bright and beautiful. Tall trees groaned under the weight of the ripe fruit, and nearby a babbling brook ran past, its banks covered with colourful flowers. Coming towards her was a group of small, odd-looking people, a much older lady in a stunning sparkly dress with them. I'm the Good Witch of the North. Welcome to the Land of Oz, she said. She gestured to her companions. My friends, the Munchkins, are very grateful for you to come and kill the Wicked Witch of the East. You have set them three at last. Puzzled, Dorothy looked down and saw two legs wearing a pair of sparkly red shoes poking out from under her house. She gave a little scream and watched in horror as the legs shivered away to nothing, leaving only the shoes. Who was she? Dorothy asked the good witch. She was a powerful, wicked witch, the good witch replied, taking Dorothy's plait pigtails and blue and white checkered dress. You must be a good sorcerer indeed, even if you do dress rather oddly. She noticed Dorothy's simple black shoes and gasped as if in pain. Oh! How hideous, she said, and picked up the Wicked Witch's red slippers. You'd better take these. They hold some kind of magic charm or other, but we don't know what it is. After several miles, the yellow brick road passed through Cornfield. Beside the road was a scarecrow. As Dorothy and Toto passed by, he winked at them. Dorothy gasped and jumped back, and Toto got such a fright that he leapt into a prickly bush. You wouldn't mind lifting me down, would you? The scarecrow asked politely. I don't weigh much. Toto barked and growled at the scarecrow as he plucked prickles out of his rump with his teeth. But Dorothy thought he seemed nice enough. He was certainly the nicest scarecrow she had ever met. Dorothy helped the scarecrow down to the ground. He thanked her and asked where she was going. Dorothy explained she was going to see the wizard. The scarecrow looked very excited. May I come with you, he asked. Maybe the wizard could give me a brain. He lifted his hat and full a hand, pulled a handful of straw from his head. I so wish to be smart, but I only have straw for brains. Dorothy was happy to help and told the scarecrow he may join her and they set off along the yellow brick road together, chatting merrily. Later that day, they came upon a woodcutter's cottage. Outside it stood a man completely made of tin who was holding an axe in mid-air, ready to chop a tree branch. He seemed to be frozen in place. Would you be so kind as to oil my joints? the tin man asked. 
through his creaky rusty jaw. Dorothy found an old iron can by the uh, by an old the tin man's joints until he could move freely. He was very grateful. When Dorothy told the tin man where she was going, he asked if he could join them. I've heard of the great wizard of Oz, he said, and I'm sure he could give me a heart. I only want to love and be loved, but that's very hard without a heart. He banged his tin chest with his tin fist and it made a hollow clanging sound. Dorothy agreed that he should join them and they set off along the yellow brick road once more. Oh, we stuck together. We stuck together. <laughs> the road led them through a dark and gloomy forest full of strange screeches and squawks and grunts and growls. Suddenly a huge lion leapt out onto the road ahead of them and let out a fierce roar. Toto barked and the lion bared his teeth and tried to bite him. Don't you dare bite my dog, Dorothy cried, stepping forwards and smacking the lion on the nose. You should be ashamed of yourself. A big beast like you trying to eat a little dog. You are just a big coward. The lion's jaw snapped shut. His eyes welled up and to Dorothy's great surprise, he began to cry. I've always been a coward, he said through his song. I wish I was brave, but I can't help being scared. Dorothy felt very sorry for the poor creature and suggested that he join them on their journey. I'm sure the wizard can give you some courage, she said. The overjoyed lion promised he would not try to bite Toto again. They travelled further into the forest and came to a wide river that had a rickety wooden bridge over it. Just as they were about to cross, the group heard terrifying sounds coming from the forest around them. The lion gasped in fright. The calendars! he whispered. Several beasts stepped out of the trees and Dorothy saw what had terrified the lion so. The calendars were giant creatures with bodies like bears and heads like tigers. They had razor sharp claws and long pointy fangs. Everyone get across the bridge, yelled the scarecrow. We'll never make it, cried Dorothy. I'll hold them off, said the lion, and he turned to face them. He roared his most terrifying roar, stopping them startled in their tracks. When everyone had reached the far side of the river, the lion sprang onto the bridge and ran as fast as he could. But they chased them. The lion reached the far side as they started to cross and the tin man began to chop the bridge. They were almost across as the tin man struck his final stroke. The bridge gave way with a huge crack and fell into the river and washed some of them away. Dorothy and her friends hugged each other with relief. Keen to get out of the dark forest, they had a short rest then continued on their way. The next morning they reached the edge of a forest and were very excited to see a shining city in the distance. That must be the Emerald City, cried Dorothy, and she began to run along the road, the others close behind. As they ran, Dorothy and her friends came up upon a vast field of brilliant red flowers. Instead of following the road, they ran in a circle around the field. They took a shortcut through it. They plunged into the field, whooping and leaping and giggling as the flowers tickled their legs. Little did they know that the flowers possessed a powerful magic. Dorothy soon slowed to a walk. A wave of weariness washed over her and she sat down. Within a few minutes, she was fast asleep. Toto, too, slipped into a weary slumber. The lion suddenly stopped and dropped to the ground fast asleep, too. The scarecrow and the tin man were not made of flesh and blood, so they weren't affected by the magic. Oh no, the scarecrow cried over the lion's spitting snores. We must get them out. The tin man heaved Dorothy over his shoulder and carried her to the road. While the scarecrow collected Toto, the lion, however, was another matter. They heaved and pulled, hauled and pushed, but the lion wouldn't budge. We may have to leave him here, Scarecrow said sadly. We will not leave our friend behind, insisted the tin man. They heaved and pulled and hauled and pushed some more, and eventually they found they could roll the lion along the ground, <laughs> bit by bit. It was very hard work, but finally he was too back on the yellow brick road. After a few hours, Dorothy, Toto and the lion woke, slightly confused but unaware that anything had happened. What a pretty flower field, said Dorothy. We should take a shortcut. 
No, said the scarecrow and the tin man together. They each looped an arm around Dorothy and set off along the road. Eventually, they reached a huge green gate with studs and glittering emeralds and surrounded by towering city walls made of green brick. Dorothy banged three times on the gate. Soon a shutter opened and a man in a green hat poked his head out. State your business, he said. We are here to see the Wizard of Oz, said Dorothy. The man opened the gate and escorted them to the palace. They were taken to a great room with a green marble floor and an emerald coloured curtain that covered an entire wall. After waiting for what seemed like a long time, a voice boomed through the room. I am Oz, the great and terrible. Who are you? Dorothy was frightened, but found the courage to speak. I am Dorothy, sir, she said. A great wind carried me and my house to the land of Oz and now I'm stranded here. Ah, boomed the voice. So you are the one who killed the wicked witch of the East. I suppose I am, replied Dorothy. But it really was an accident. And what do you want of me? asked the voice. Dorothy explained that she'd wished him to help her get home to Kansas. Then she introduced her friends and explained that they saw a brain, a heart and some courage. After a long pause, the voice replied, I will grant you all ask, but first you must complete a task. You must travel to the castle of the Wicked Witch of the West and destroy her. Dorothy burst into tears, but I've never killed anyone or anything for any purpose in my life. And even if I wanted to kill her, I don't have a spare house. You'll think of something. Now go, said the wizard. The band of friends left the Emerald City and followed the yellow brick road to the strangely empty and quiet lands of the Wicked Witch of the West. They had no idea how they would destroy the Wicked Witch or even if they would be able to find her. They needn't have worried, however, as the witch had already seen them from the tallest tower of her castle. Furious that they were trespassing on her land, she hopped up and down, muttering to herself and scratching at her warty face. Then she took a go out a golden whistle and blew three long notes. Soon there was a great fluttering and an army of winged monkeys swarmed around her. Fetch me that wretched girl and lion, the witch told the king of the monkeys. Destroy the others. The winged monkeys nodded and flew away. They grabbed upon the lion and Dorothy, who clutched Toto close to her chest. Then they pulled the stuffing out of the scarecrow so he was nothing more than a pile of rags and dropped the tin man from a great height so he broke into pieces. The witch told Dorothy and the lion, sorry, the monkeys took Dorothy and the lion to the wicked witch. They held each other and trembled as the witch rubbed her hands together and cackled. She was staring at Dorothy's shoes. I've wanted those magical shoes, oh so sparkly shoes, for so long, she said, and now they are mine. Then she looks at the lion, and you do a good job pulling my chariot when I go for a drive. Everyone in Oz will remark at my noble steed and my beautiful slippers, she said. And she danced a little jig that flicked up her skirt, revealing a pair of hairy legs with knobbly knees. Though terrified, Dorothy and the lion could not help but chuckle. The witch became very angry and lunged towards Dorothy. Now give me those shoes, she cried. This made Dorothy more cross. She picked a nearby bucket of water that had been left on the floor and angrily splashed its contents over the witch, who began to shriek. No, cried the witch, I'm melting. And so she was. Soon, all that was left of her was a sticky brown puddle. You did it, cried the lion, and he picked up Dorothy and spun her around. Even Toto was springing merrily in the air, splashing in the puddle and making happy little yaps. Dorothy and the lion returned to the forest to find their friends. They put the tin man back together and filled the scarecrow with fresh straw. They were as good as new in no time at all. The merry little band followed the road back to the Emerald City. The countryside, which had seemed eerie and deserted before, was now full of people who were all rejoicing the death of the Wicked Witch of the West. When they arrived back in the Emerald City, they were taken again once to the great room. After a long wait, the voice boomed out. You have destroyed the Wicked Witch of the West. Yes, replied Dorothy. Now all we must ask is you give us the rewards that you promised. Well, said the voice, that may be somewhat difficult. 
As the voice spoke, Toto ran over to the curtain, covering the wall and began tugging at the corner. Soon the whole curtain fell away and behind it was a little man with little spectacles, which made his eyes appear very large. Dorothy was shocked. Why, you're not a wizard, you're just a man, she exclaimed. The man huffed and puffed as if about to argue, but finally came further into the room. I'm sorry, my dear, he sighed. I arrived in Oz when my hot air balloon drifted away from my homeland and landed here. The people thought I was a wizard and I came from the sky. I was a little frightened, so I let them believe it. But why did you promise us help what you couldn't give? asked Dorothy, feeling very sad. I meant well, replied Oz. I have grown to care for the people of this land very much. You did us all great service by ridding us of that wicked witch. But what about my brain? asked the scarecrow. And my heart? asked the tin man. And my courage? asked the lion. Oz jumped from his chair excitedly. I believe I can help with those, he said, as he ran off behind the curtain. When Oz returned, he, filled the scare he lifted the scarecrow's hat and filled his head with a handful of pins and needles. He then sewed it up. From now on, you shall certainly be sharp-witted, said Oz. The scarecrow was delighted. I feel so smart, he said. I'd tell you all the smart things I'm thinking, but I'm only clever enough to understand. Dorothy smiled. She thought the scarecrow had been perfectly smart all along. Oz went behind the curtain again and this time returned with a small satin heart filled with sawdust. He cut a small hole in the tin man's chest, placed in the heart and repaired the hole. Now you have a brand new heart, he said. The tin man was overjoyed. He hugged everyone in the room and told them he loved them so very much. Dorothy giggled, thinking how kind-hearted the tin man had been since the day she had met him. Finally, Oz went behind the curtain and returned with a bottle of liquid that he off offered to the lion. Drink this and you'll be the bravest lion in Oz, he said. The lion gulped down the liquid quickly, then pranced and prowled around the room, bellowing in his most fierce roar. Oz leaned over and winked at Dorothy. It was only water in the bottle, but it seems to have helped him find his inner courage, he whispered. This made Dorothy giggle again. After their very first meeting, she always found the lion very courageous indeed. Now, my dear, Oz said to Dorothy, I have an idea that might see you both home. We'll make another hot air balloon and sail across the desert all the way to Kansas. My home is not far from there. Over the next day and some weeks, Oz and Dorothy and her friends worked on the balloon until it was finally ready. Oz and Dorothy said a tearful goodbye to their friends and the town folk, then climbed into the basket. The balloon began to rise, but at the last moment, Toto leaped out of Dorothy's arms and ran off. Dorothy immediately jumped out to chase him. The balloon lifted from the ground and began to strain against the ropes that held it down. Hurry, my dear, cried Oz, but finally, snap, the rope broke and the balloon sailed away. Farewell, cried Oz, waving at the balloons, rose higher and higher. That was the last anybody heard of the great Wizard of Oz, but he was always remembered fondly. Poor Dorothy slumped to the floor and began to cry. She cried and cried until she heard a soft, friendly voice say, No need for tears. Dorothy looked up to see a kindly looking lady with rich red hair and bright blue eyes, wearing a white dress. I am Glinda, the good witch of the South. Pleased to meet you, said Dorothy hiccuping as she tried to control her sobs. But you don't understand now, I'll never get home. Oh yes you will, said Glinda cheerfully. Your shoes contain a very special type of magic. Just knock your heels together three times and ask to be carried wherever you want to go. If she had known, Dorothy could have gone home any time she liked. But then she would never have had such a grand adventure and made so many wonderful friends. Dorothy smiled and dried her tears. She hugged each of her friends tightly, then picked up Toto and tapped her heels together three times. Home to Kansas, she said. Instantly, she and Toto went whirling through the air, so swiftly that all Dorothy could feel was the wind whistling past her ears. In no time at all, she felt a gentle bump as she landed on the ground again. Good gracious, Dorothy cried as she looked around. She was back home at the little farm on the prairie. There was even a new house in place of the old one that had blown away. 
and there was Aunt Emma rushing towards her. Darling girl, wherever did you come from? She asked as she folded Dorothy into her arms and covered her face with kisses. From the land of Oz, said Dorothy gravely, and I'm so glad to be home again. I hope you all enjoyed that story. It's a very long one, but like I said, if we were all comfy and cosy, we can enjoy it together. I hope you enjoyed it too, Mum, because it is obviously a special story for your 15th birthday, because I can't be there to make it special for you, but I know that you love fuss. So I thought if I decorate up here and read one of your favourite stories, it's like I'm with you in some sort of way. Thank you everyone for listening. I hope everybody has a lovely rest of the day and mum you have a super special birthday. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe on the YouTube channel and make sure that you join us on Friday for hashtag Fresh Story Friday. But for now we've heard hashtag we read on Wednesday and it was a super special one for my mummy's birthday. Have a lovely evening everyone. Bye mum. See you later. Bye everyone.